Oh. Well, we've been going through the swarms and we're on the last few. We thought this is very apt, we'll come along and we'll show you what we're doing. We've been catching swarms obviously, which everybody does when they're beekeeping. This little bit here, we've got eight bee boxes together that have been the last of the swarms that we're basically caught and that we're going through. Because you want to leave them by themselves for at least a couple of brood cycles, so that you know you haven't actually inherited some deadly disease from, I guess, from the swarm that turns up. It's very wise if you can possibly get organised. Don't bring your new swarms into your old apiary until you know that they're safe. So we had these girls set out on a people's farm that get a lot of bees flying past and they've obviously got a few swarms in there and got organised. Like I said at the start of this, I just like to go through them and make sure that they're all happy and healthy before I incorporate them into everything else. They didn't have a lot of honey on because where they were the flowers had stopped, well basically stopped producing. So I probably left them where they were, well, where they were caught. I probably left them there a month too long but Anyway, we better late than never, as the saying goes. So should we poke ahead in a box and see what we can find? Righty-o. So we've got our little smoker. We'll give everybody a bit of a puff up. A bit of a puff in the front so the girls get a bit distracted. We'll just get this strap out of the way. Doesn't even look like they have set that down, so they're not real strong, this lot. A bit of smoke under there. I think if I remember rightly, last year these, these girls that come from this area were a bit toey, but we'll find out. Right, let's have a look what we've got. What are we doing, chicks? We're not too angry, that's something. There wasn't any brood on that frame, so there's not much to see there. Here we go, we've got a little bit of laying going on. We've got a queen cell, but I don't think there's a queen in there. Got some nice young brood on that one. Hang on, we'll shake our girls off. If we can. <laughs> Now the larvae looks nice and white, so that's a good start. That's a step in the right direction. And the cap, little bit of brood there looks okay. So when you're doing your hive inspections, you've got to check every frame. This is especially important when it's your first time through a, a new swarm, because you want to, and sometimes you've got to shake your bees off a bit so you can actually see the brood properly. What you don't want to see is holes in the capped brood you don't want to see any holes you don't want to see any black sunken stuff and you're hopefully going to see some nice little white larvae and a little bit of honey so you know you've got a laying queen which we've seen some larvae so we know we've got a laying queen it's not completely imperative to find the queen it's just kind of cool if you get to see the queen but it doesn't really matter for this inspection if you don't and so if you do see a hole it doesn't hurt to actually just flick the top off with your hive tool just to make sure you got a nice white larvae in there Sometimes you'll find a hole on top of a larvae and that's because you've got chalk brood in there, which is a pain in the bum, but it's not quite as deadly as some of your other jolly, horrible American fowl broods and European fowl brood. But so you just, after a while, you'll get good at seeing what you're looking for. But I like to have a look at the frame before I shake the bees off, just to see if I can see the queen, because that's kind of fun to find her. But just have a quick look. This is a nice, solid laying pattern. So she's looking pretty good. I'll just shake the bees off. Try to make sure you shake your bees into your box because you know you don't want to lose your boss woman. That's that would defeat the purpose completely. But she's not laying too bad there for for a swarm. And I normally like to leave them in here for a little while, and then once you're satisfied that they haven't got any diseases, you can transfer them into a nice new box and incorporate them into your apiary. And then by next season, or if you're in a really lucky part of the world, by this season you'll get some honey out of them. These girls aren't completely angry, so that's something. <laughs> they might not even need a new queen straight away unless her laying pattern's terrible, but it's a bit early to tell that her, how about her laying capacity because it could just be that they hadn't been bringing in a lot of supplies for her to lay up. Because bees are pretty clever. They won't lay a heap of population unless they've got feed to feed everybody. They might be small, but they're not silly, really. They're a very clever little insect. There we go, we'll put their lid back on. We'll have a bit of a peekaboo in the neighbour and see what that's doing. So that's one that's positive, that's a good start. Looks like these girls are going through the lid next door here. <laughs> that's another thing with swarm boxes, generally they're not, you, you know, well you're not going to leave your best boxes out to catch swarms, so 
they're generally a little bit rough around the edges but, but you want to make sure when you're going to do this check how their entrance is going because I mean as these girls are going in and out the lid so they might have some actually old stuff stuck to the bottom so you want to poke your hive tool in the door here in a minute like this is the entrances down here you just want to make sure that that's not all blocked up which it don't seem to be and they've obviously swarmed into the top so they've come in there so we'll just give them a bit of smoke and then we'll poke ourselves in there by the way if you do be doing this job and you happen to come across a suspicious hive that you think's bad don't continue on you've got to go and wash your hive tool wash your jolly smoker change your gloves get all organized and disinfect everything otherwise you're going to take the disease from the box that you find it in to the next box and the next box and you're kind of going to defeat the purpose so you know like I haven't actually brought all the sterilizing stuff with me so if we happen to find what we don't want to find we're going to stop it's another little swarm that's why they're in the lid here a bit <laughs> obviously caught a bit of cactus on my way out the plant <laughs> mm -mm -mm -hmm. girls what have we got going on here you never know what you're going to find when you put an old swarm box up. You're not 100, never 100 percent sure what you what was happened to it before you got the bees in it. These girls are a little less happy to see us. You never know what mood you're going to find your girls in when they're a swarm. This is the interesting part when you start going through the first two times. You think you start making a mental note of, hmm, I'm wondering if she's going to actually survive being a queen for too long. Like I said, they were on some pretty slim pickings of. I've brought them here where there's a little bit more forage for them. They're starting to bring in a bit of honey, which is good. So hopefully they start laying up. Well, here's a bit of brood anyway. Just have a quick look to see if we can see the queen. Bought her just yet, but they can see there's some nice white larvae in there, which is good. So someone's in here laying. So we'll just shake some of the workforce off so we can have a proper look at our brood. And so far that looks pretty good. It's on a bit of a rough frame, but that's not their fault. At least they haven't built any cross comb just yet, so that's a good start. <laughs> that's usually a bit of a bummer when you come into a hive and have decided to build this way instead of up and down. That makes life a bit of fun. They look pretty good. Oh, golly ladies, I know I'm sorry. You're not happy to see me, are you? Not happy to see me at all. Going all right, John. They're a little bit angry, but that'll be right. Whoa, that upset somebody. <laughs> Someone important on that frame, I think. Very good. Well, we'll put this back together before they get any sillier. As you can see, they're not the friendliest mob. So I think the cameraman's going to put some of that music on that goes that diddle 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 diddle. So you think beekeeping is done really quickly because I, you know, like I can move fast and stealthily. <laughs> find anything bad there's a little bit of chalk brood which is kind of to be expected sometimes from some wild swarms that come from anywhere one thing I would like to show you before we go though is just when you're doing your inspections and when you're trying to implement all of these swarms into a reality just be careful because sometimes in the roof space when they build like this it's not always honey I was just noticing here it's quite a lot of brood laid in the roof which could indicate that the queen is living in the roof of the hive so when you get to the point that you want to put a super on, you want to make sure that you haven't got any bees sitting in your roof space because if your queen's above the queen excluder, well, it kind of defeats the purpose of the queen excluder, eh? I'd just like to give a big shout out to all you people that have been on this journey with me for the last four years and, for, and especially to those that have felt so inclined to visit the store and buy something and to support us with the Patreon. Click, like, subscribe and all that stuff that goes on there out in internet land. You know what, let's share the love of beekeeping and keep this world alive. <laughs>